Hello, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and this is the Orion 8-inch uh, classical Cassegrain telescope. It's an astrograph, um, and it's a little bit different than your average uh, Schmidt Cassegrain, which you're probably all used to, uh, which has a corrector plate up front, a lens that looks like a flat pane of glass up front. Well, this doesn't. This is an open tube design, which uh, has several advantages. So I wanted to go through the, uh, the features of it and uh, tell you all about it. So first of all, it's a, uh, an 8 inch f12, so a little bit longer than your average uh, Schmidt cast grain, which is usually f10. Uh, at f12, it's a 2400 millimeter uh, focal length, so it's very nice for high magnification detail. So uh, an excellent astrograph for lunar and planetary imaging, as well as uh, some of the brighter, more dense, uh, small deep sky objects. So planetary nebula, globular clusters, especially when you combine this with uh, one of the newer, more sensitive DSLRs or CMOS uh, uh, style astro chips. It excels at both imaging and uh, visual use. So uh, feel free to slap a, a diagonal and an eyepiece on this and you can get very nice high resolution uh, views of the moon and planets. And then you attach the DSLR and you can uh, do excellent uh, imaging with a nice corrected uh, flat image across your uh, CCD chip. So to some of the differences between a classical cast grain and a Schmidt cast grain, it's still nice and short. It's only about 25 inches long with this 8 inch, even though it's an F12 at 2400 millimeters, which again is, is longer than your average 8 inch F10 uh, at 2000 millimeters. So if you look up in front, there is no corrector plate up here, which uh, that's my least favorite part of a Schmidt cast grain. That corrector plate always dews over, right? You're outside at night. It's kind of, there, there's some moisture in the air. First thing that goes is that corrector plate, and then you're out of commission until you get the, the dew off. Uh, but then you might think, okay, well, I'll put a dew shield or dew heater on that um, Schmidt Cassegrain. But then you gotta worry about power. A dew heater can suck up a lot of uh, your battery power. And a dew shield, I mean, it'll keep the, the dew off for a while, but if it's really dewy night, it'll eventually get inside the shield and, and do your, your corrector over. So not having one is, is, a, is a nice advantage. And then the tube itself is a very long shield, so you, you won't get the, the primary mirror doing over. Uh, th th and uh, what I should say is the way they do that, uh, with a schmidt cast grain, the correction in the lenses is up front before the light actually even hits the primary mirror. With a classical cast grain, the optics are a little bit different. It's a parabolic primary mirror and a hyperbolic secondary mirror. So the corrections are done at the mirrors themselves instead of uh, up front in the, correction, uh, in the corrector plate. Another nice advantage is the baffling down the tube. A, uh, a lot of standard Schmidt Cassegrains have just a, a flat black painted wall. But if you can see from the side here, there's a bunch of uh, baffles all the way up and down. I believe it's 11, though I haven't quite counted, but it's, I think it's 11 baffles all the way up and down, leading to very high contrast, low light scatter bouncing around inside the tube, um, which gives you just a better image quality, uh, better astro photos, especially if you're imaging nearby a bright star, but the star is just out of the field of view. So a very nice advantage. The secondary mirror, that hyperbolic uh, secondary mirror, uh, still is relatively small compared to something like an RC, which can be upwards of 50% obstruction. This is a 34% obstruction by diameter. So it's right in that range of uh, some of the other scopes. Um, another advantage over a Schmidt cast grain or a Mac cast grain, with a classical cast grain here, the mirrors are fixed. You're not moving the primary mirror to focus. Uh, on a Schmidt cast grain, you twist a little knob and the mirror itself moves back and forth on a little rack. That can lead to some mirror flop or uh, when you change directions, the mirror kind of goes from one side of the gear thread to the other. So um, some, some flop or mirror shift can develop. Since these are fixed, there is no flop. Focusing is done by the ver very robust uh, linear bearing focus on the back. And I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, so some very nice advantages over your standard Schmidt cast or Maksutov cast grain design. Okay, so let's talk about that focuser. That's uh, one of my favorite parts of the telescope. This is a rather large, robust linear bearing focus focuser, which means it's uh, designed to take a lot of weight. It holds it very, uh, very solidly. It doesn't slip on you. Um, and you've got a very smooth motion. You've got 10 to one reduction. So you've got the course adjustment here, and then there's a fine focus wheel on the side. Um, allowing you to achieve that critical focus zone, uh, which especially at high magnifications is very, um, uh, very important. There's a very large back focus with a telescope like this, so you can use uh, not only an eyepiece and a diagonal, uh, like a two-inch eyepiece uh, and two-inch diagonal, um, but 
it also reaches focus with any number of uh, uh, accessories in your imaging train. So let's say you had a monochrome C, uh, CCD or CMOS chip and you wanted to put a filter wheel in front, maybe an adaptive optic system that could take up many inches of back focus. Uh, the focuser can handle all of that. We include three extension rings, two one inch rings and then a two inch extension ring and they actually thread in underneath the focuser. So you, you pull the focuser off, attach whatever rings you need, thread it back on and now you're at that focus point with uh, whatever uh, camera or eyepiece you want to use. The mirrors in the telescope are made out of quartz, which is a very low uh, thermal expansion substrate material. It's even lower thermal expansion than Pyrex. So a nice thermally stable system that uh, won't change its shape as the temperature drops. Um, basically what happens is as the temperature goes down, the, the mirrors can slightly change shape, leading to a little bit softer images. But quartz will hold a very good figure on the mirror uh, as the temperature drops. The mirrors are 96% uh, reflectivity. Uh, coated, so the, uh, they're enhanced aluminum basically. So you get a very efficient light path from the light coming down and hitting your camera or eyepiece. It's a very bright image for an eight inch. While I'm um, aiming the scope uh, towards you uh, from the back, uh, let me show you the two accessory uh, dovetail shoes that it comes with. You get two of our finder brackets on either side of the top of the scope. Uh, so that means you can have one finder scope here, you can put a guide scope on the other side, two finders, whatever you wanted to do. We give you the option for either one. On top is a Vixen style rail, so you can attach any number of accessories up there like a piggyback adapter or guide rings, uh, whatever is necessary up top. And on the bottom, you get the wider Lozmandy D style plate, I aim it this way. Uh, this is the wider plate, so this would go on any mount that's designed for uh, using the Lozmandy D series plate. So that means our Atlas, um, this is the Atlas that I'm using here to show it off, the Atlas Pro, the HDX, uh, any number of different uh, mounts would work with this scope. Uh, speaking of a uh, mount to use with this scope, the telescope itself weighs 18 pounds. Uh, that's without finders, without cameras, whatever else. So what you need to do is decide how much you're going to be putting on top of the telescope. Uh, how heavy is your camera? your guide scope, your uh, filter wheel, uh, adaptive optics, whatever else you're going to be putting on there. Total up the total, the, 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 the complete weight of the system and then decide what mount will be useful. I think the Atlas or Atlas Pro is probably best uh, in our line to hold this because you've got some overhead on top of um, the scope itself. You could use the Sirius mount which holds up to 30 pounds but if you load this all up with a bunch of things you might start to get kind of close to that 30 pound capacity of the Sirius. So I think the Atlas is probably the best match. All right, well, that's pretty much it. That's, it's a, uh, a really nicely designed long focal length, 8-inch uh, F12. That's 2,400 millimeter focal length again. Uh, great for lunar, planetary viewing and imaging, and even some of the brighter, more dense, smaller deep sky objects uh, come into very good uh, detail with a more sensitive CCD or CMOS style um, astrophotography camera. The Orion 8-inch classical cast screen. All right, thank you very much. Clear skies.